Shalom, shalom. I need you Huda Yoruba. I'm Judah the Shooter. Um, and I'm back with another one. You can definitely find me at youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. That's J U D A H D A S H O O T A H. Judah the Shooter. Now, for many of you all know, I am the author of the famous book, The um, the Unwritten Rules of Polygyny, which, of course, can be found at propolybook.com, even if you're a person who do not support poly. Now, um, those of you who are friends with me on social media, you may notice that I have been removing you all, no matter if I know you, if I don't know you. It's only because you haven't gotten the book from propolybook.com. That will be for the people who only have the book from that particular website only and have the hard copy i'm gonna repeat that if you have the book from that website only propolybook.com all right that being said um it's a lot i want to talk about today and who knows maybe i may do serious maybe i won't i don't know um but there are some things that's been on my mind uh, i've been asked uh questions over the last 10 days um about various topics uh, they're going in the community. When I say the community, the uh, Israelite community, yes, I confess myself to be an Israelite, of course, but I do not subscribe to a lot of the bad doctrine that you might be used to hearing on YouTube or when you might see people out on the streets. Now, I'm not one of the Israelites that stand out on the street corners and cuss out white people, all right, in whom they classify as Esau. All right, so if you're a first timer, I don't know what is he talking about. Um, um, many of the Israelites believe that Esau is the so-called white man and that he derives from Edom uh, in the Bible in Genesis, the 25th chapter, whose lineage goes back uh, Genesis 36 chapter. Uh, I don't care to get in, uh, too deep into that, maybe at a later time, but this, I want to deal with some doctrine. All right. So um, that being said, um, I did have a time in my life to where I was at the angry stage at the other nations until I realized it was really us. It was our fault. Um, that being said, um, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, the first thing I want to talk about first, um, well, the main thing I'm, I'm going to discuss is Deuteronomy 23 and 7. So let me say this first. So in Deuteronomy 23 and 7, there's a scripture in English that says, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. All right. And this is whom most Israelites, not all, but most Israelites classify as the white men today. And that scripture is saying, don't abhor, don't detest, don't look at them as abominable, disgusting, or have any sort of hatred toward them. So there are groups of Israelites that said it's a mistranslation. So what we'll do is we're going to go into the translation and we're going to go into the points that they say that this is a mistranslation. All right. So uh, I'm going to slowly walk into this. But before we do. Um, the first thing I want to discuss, matter of fact, let me just show you real quick. Um, let me pull it up one second, ladies and gents. Bear with me here. All righty. So we're going to go to Sefer Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy. All right. In chapter 23. So I'll first read it first before we go ahead and get some understanding. So it says, Lo, te tavev. I'm, I'm sorry, lo te ta'ev, apologize, adomi, not rami, which we'll get to later. Uh, but then it goes on to say, ki achicha, hu lo te ta'ev, mitzre ki ger haita ve arzo. So we have lo te ta'ev, you should not abhor, Adomi in Edomai, ki achicha hu. Says, for he is your brother. Lo titaev, you should not abhor or detest. Mizre, an Egyptian. Ki haita, says, for you was ger, a foreigner or stranger. Then we have the word ve arzo, has the word aretz. So in his Rats land. So that's what you have there in uh, Deuteronomy. All right. So I first want to read that first and show that it does, in fact, have the word Adomi. All right. But we're going to go into what people say. All right. So it does have the word Adomi. All right. In Edomite. 
All right, so, but I'm going to go over the doctrine that is being said. So you already know out the gate that it does say Adomi, all right? But before diving into that, one of the things I want to bring up first is that when you have brothers like myself that bring these things up and say, hey, it does say that. They'll say, oh, you're reading Yiddish. All right, so uh, there's a few things I want to go over. So once again, we have low. Lo titaev, you should not pour a dominion Edomite key for uh Achicha who so for um he is Achicha your ah brother. Lo titaev, you should not pour Ms. Ray an Egyptian ki ger haita, which means for he was ger a foreigner. Ve arzo in. I'm sorry, you were. I'm sorry, he was a stranger in his rest land. All right. So, that being said, um, there's something I wrote about maybe 10 days ago. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and dive into that real quick. Let me get a sip of my juice. All right. So, I'm gonna uh, direct you to a post that I made. Okay, so, ladies and gents, there's something I want to pull up. Um, as you see, I was just on this site uh, a few seconds ago, uh, blueletterbible.com, and I had pulled this word here, Adomi, which is, um, well, you know, is an Edomite. Now, here, you see the root word, Adomi, of course. You Then you see this word here, Strong's, Strong's. Strong's, what is that? As later I'll go into here, show you. Strong's, all right, exhaustive concordance of the Bible. And I may go into this one as well. The new Strong's, exhaustive concordance of the Bible, okay? Strong's, all right, so long story short, this is where you can see words in the Bible. I'll just get a random one real quick. Uh, I went to, let's see. Okay, I turn to the letter G right there, right? It starts off with the word gate. I believe, was it the word gate over here? Uh, what we at? Yeah, gate. Or oh, ends with the word gate. So you can, so it has the verses right here. And then you see those numbers on the end by the uh, G, which stands for Greek. And it says 8179, I believe. Yeah, that's the, what you know is the social security number, basically, to where you can find the meaning of that word. All right, what it says in the Greek text. Now, that's for what you call a New Testament scripture. This is for people who don't know. Now, here, if you go, let me go back to those words really quick. All right. Now, so if you saw that word 87, um, I forgot it was 91, I believe, man. But anyway, you go to the Greek text right here, and then you can find that number, and it'll tell you what that word mean and meant. In uh, the text, uh, the original text. Uh, that being said, so we see Greek. We're going to go all the way back as well. You will see numbers also. And this is for new people who don't know what this is. And it'll make a lot more sense later. Okay. So sometimes you will see H and then you'll see these numbers. The H stands for Hebrew. What would be the word in the Hebraic text? All right. And that's what we're going to go over later. All right. What would be the word in the Hebraic text? Okay. That being said, when you see Strong's, that's what it's referring to. So if you don't have a physical copy of the Strong's to where you can look words up and see what it says in the text or get the root words and get an overall meaning, you can get it from your Strong's concordance. All right. You get the hard copies. Uh, there's a Strong's. I have another one called the Strongest of Strong's, etc. So there are different um, books, of course. Now, what most people don't know is the name Strong's. Where does it come from? And what is Strong's? Why is it called Strong's? So when people are like, well, look it up in the Strong's or look it up in the Strong's Concordance. This here. Well, okay, it says the word God, but what does it say in the Strong Concordance? Okay, it says G, which stands for Greek. Now let's throw some random numbers. G4503. That would be Greek 4503, etc. All right. And it says Theos, Greek, or H um 
8460, H is Hebrew, and 8460 would be the word. Well, it says Elohim, all right, in Hebrew. So anyway, Strong's Concordance, well, you can look these words up, okay? That being said, let me go back real quick because I'm about to point something out really quick. So once again, when you see these words here, all right, you can pull the Strong's up, and as you see right here, when you see thou shout is given H was Hebrew, as I just shown you in the Strong's Concordance, 8581. All right. So this word here, te ta'ev, has the root word ta'ev. All right. Ta'ab. Now, what most people don't know, this word right here, if it has a if it has no daggers, technically it makes a V sound, but you can also pronounce it as a B sound. So some will read this as ta'ab. Ta'ab. Some will read this as ta'ab or ta'ev. Let's see what they say. Strong's H eighty five eighty one. Ta'ev. Ta'ev. Notice it says Strong's. What is Strong's? I just got done showing you a Strong's concordance. Notice we say Strong's again. Listen. Strong's H eighty five eighty one. You hear that? You heard them say Strong's. This is the word low. Low, where well, you hear people say la'a, in other words, which we'll deal with in a second. Why does it say Strong's? Strong's H3808. Low. Low. So notice it says Strong's, uh, uh, it says Strong's H3808. Strong's H, which is Hebrew, but it's the 3808th number. All right. Now, when you Get the Strong's Concordance. All you have to do is go into the back of the book. Look for Hebrew, right? And it says 3808. Let me pull it up for you real quick. This is for my new people, all right? I'm going to pull that up. 3808. I got to find the number. All right, 3835, 3810, 3805, uh, 3808. Here we go. Let me highlight it for you so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Remember online it said 3808. It's the Strong's Concordance. You can see right there, 3808, low, low. So you can look that up. And when you see the H, ladies and gents, that stands for Hebrew. So H. 3808. All right. So you can look these words up, but you can see it online if you don't have a physical copy. All righty. That being said, hopefully you caught on to that. Hopefully you know this. All right. So once again, you see here, H3808. I just saw you in the physical copy. It says low, low, which is a negative. It can mean no, don't, neither, not. All right. In Hebrew. In this particular case, has the word not. All right. That being said, so I want to point something out first before diving deeper into the Deuteronomy 23 and 17. This is something I wrote about 10 days ago. I want you to pay attention. All right. So this is, you see this man here? I have Strong's Concordance Creator in 1890. All right. This is a man who you know as James Strong's. James Strong is his name, all right? And this Strong's Concordance was created in what year, guys? 1890. That's when it was actually created. Hopefully you are following along, all right? That being said, look at what I have here in the meme. Now, a lot of it was a, a bit of uh, me cracking jokes, too. That's a whole other topic. I say he ain't Gad or Ephraim. Why? Because there are Israelites that believe that some people who look like this could be from Gad Ephraim, all right? That's whatever. But anyway, that was me cracking a joke. I said, or Ishakar, because some believe that some Mexicans that look like this will be Israelites too. Uh, I said, as you would say, um, or because some counts will say, well, the white man, he's the, he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's what they'll say, all right? But you still read his concordance. Now, what is the hypocrisy in that, though? That that right there is the biggest thing that bothers me. 
if you say that, oh, well, the white man is the devil, well, then why do you read his concordance then? Why do you get information from his concordance? So in the meme, I go on to say, Shalom, which is the Hebrew word for peace. You may hear people say Shalom. Uh, I said Shalom, or what they call Shalom, isn't Yiddish. But even if it was, like even if Shalom was Yiddish, this is what I said. You study and get Hebrew words and definitions from the same Hebrew that you classify as Yiddish. Hmm. How stupid is that? Now, what are you talking about? Well, remember, if they go and read this here, they'll say, well, uh, the word for not, right? What is that in the Strong's? Well, right here, let's click on low. Okay, y'all, it's uh, H3808. And then they'll say la ah. No, it says low. So you're using the same Hebrew and you looking up definitions in the, from the same Hebrew from James Strong's, a person who you would classify as the devil that the Bible speaks of. You'll go right to Strong's concordance and pull his meaning, what he said that the word means. But all oh, but the white man can't tell the truth. He's a liar. Then why even use his concordance at all in the first place if you feel that way? If you feel that way, why use his resources? So I said Shalom isn't Yiddish, but even if it was, you study and get Hebrew words and definitions from the same Hebrew, meaning the Hebrew language, that you classify as Yiddish. How stupid is that? Yiddish is originally just some Hebrew words with a German dialect, a.k.a. accent. So, for example, y'all know I didn't cover this before, so I really don't have to go deep into this. But check it. You can go online and just type in define Yiddish with the definition of Yiddish. And what you can do is you can ask people who know and can read the Hebrew language like myself, right? This form of Hebrew language you just saw me read, ask them, what's the difference between that Hebrew that you're reading and Yiddish? Hell, go ask some Jewish people. Go ask people who know the language. Or go ask somebody who speaks Yiddish and then ask them what's the difference between this dialect, the Sephardic dialect, and a Yiddish dialect and ask them. It's not the same thing. And even if it was, which is not, even if it was, but it's not, does it change the meaning? Does it change the meaning? Because it obviously don't if you're going into a Strong's Concordance to look up Hebrew words from the same Hebrew that you classify as Yiddish, which is not. So, Yiddish. Yiddish. It says a language used by Jewish people where? In Central and Eastern Europe, here's the timeline, before the Holocaust. But look at this. It was, was its past tense. It was originally. What does originally mean? Originally. That means its origins of Yiddish. So originally, at first, prototype. It says it was originally what? A German dialect. A German dialect or a German accent with words from, meaning deriving from Hebrew. So Yiddish was originally a German accent from Hebrew words and several other what? Modern languages. And it is today spoken mainly in U.S., Israel, and Russia. So Yiddish originally, technically, really isn't a language. It just this is a German accent that derives from other languages. That's what it is in short. So when you're looking at this, when I say lo tetaev edomi ki achi um ya achi cha hu lo tetaev mizre ki ger haita be arzo, that is not Yiddish. It's not Yiddish. But you have seen, if you've been watching my document, I mean, my document is my YouTube channel. You already know I've already dove into this long time ago. Now, that being said, the brothers that are say, oh, no, uh, you got to say, Baba Sha'ah, Bara, Allah, Hayam, Ah, Hashemayim, Wa, Ah, Haratazah, dialect, uh, which is, who don't get me started on that. Man, in fact, I may get started on that. Um, They'll come down on brothers who read the Hebrew dialect that I just read, the Sephardic Hebrew dialect. Now, Sephardic is a Hebrew word for Spain. 
Uh, this is when a lot of our ancestors, who many may not know, who helped the Moors take down and conquer Spain in 711 AD before they got kicked out in 1492 uh, AD. All right, but long story short, we had Israelites that were there in Morocco, uh, and that's the dialect that is believed to be the closest to the ancient dialect, uh, which I will dive deeper into later. Um, hold on, wait one second. I had a phone call. One second. Okay. So that being said, um, let me pull that up as well. Might as well. Here's another meme that I made right here. Uh, as you see, I got my website, propolybook.com, where you get the book, The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny. So I said, baby brews, you're going to get something like this. And they're going to tell you that it makes these sounds like baby talk. And from there, you have been indoctrinated. Um, like, um, I said, uh, like, let, uh, I say, like, let it go, elder. Uh, Kabra, Dama, Ban, Yahawada. So when you see these, they'll say this says Aba Gada Ha Wa Zaka Ta Zaya Ka La Ma Na Sa I Pa Ta Za Kwa Ra Sha and Tha. They'll say that this makes these sounds, and they'll start off with this, and already you've already been indoctrinated. All right. So although when I'm amongst my Hebrew brothers, I have no problem with saying uh, Shalawam and things like that. However, if somebody mm -hmm. all the way. Had a call. However, if somebody was to ask me, does it really make these sounds? Um, yeah. There's no ancient sources that will say that it actually did make them sounds. I'm just going to be real. All right. Although I have no problem with it. However, is when you say, well, you speak in Yiddish, and this is Lashawan Kodas. Now, for those who don't know, Lashawan is what we would say is Lashon, which is tongue or speech. Kodash is uh, Kodash, uh, Kadosh, uh, which is holy. So they'll say the holy of pure tongue. So they'll say, when we say, um, um, that's the pure tongue, the holy tongue. No, it's not. You got no proof of that. None. You got no proof of that. And that's what I want to talk about before even going into this real quick. Um, here we go. This is what I said. Now, for those of you who are baby brews and have come into the truth over the last uh, 10 years, just pipe down. Listen to what I got to say, because I know that just ruffles some feathers. Me saying that in the Hebrew community. But on record, yes, I have used this dialect in the past, how and I would still even use it in the future. However, if you come and be like, yo, did it really make those sounds? No. No. Of course not. So over here, I said, um, God's name in biblical Hebrew. So you look at here in the right-hand corner. I said, this topic is major. And if you ask 98% of Hebrews to pull a Hebrew version of the Bible and show me three scriptures with God's name in Hebrew, um, in the Hebrew text, read the verse. And then when you get to his name, tell me. So in other words, hey, get 90% of Hebrews. They claim that they know the Hebrew and speak Lashawan Kodash or whatever dialect. And ask them what name do they call the Most High or Christ. And then tell them to put out a Hebrew Bible and then let's see if it matches up. And you'll see that oftentimes you're going to run into a problem. Okay? So, I said they can't do it. Many of them have just heard what others have said. Some memes, videos with the dry eraser board, and just believed. You ask people in the Hebrew community, what is what is his name in Hebrew? Pull a Hebrew New Testament out. It's another question. Now, if you've seen my videos, you've seen me do that. I said, show me. Read the verse. No videos. No dry erase aboard. No help from your elder. Just you. Just you, my boy or my sus. Show me and tell me. You will hear names such as Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, 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 Yah
Yehovah Ahaya. And if you see my lesson on that, I did a lesson on this on this YouTube channel, YouTube YouTube.com slash um Judah the Shooter. I did a lesson on that as well. Uh Yahuwah. And I said, those such as myself who believe in the Father's um son will hear Yeshua, uh Yahshua, Yehoshua, Yehoshai. Yeshaya, Yesha, Yahawashai, Yeshua. 75% of Hebrews will say, the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's what they'll say. Then turn right around and use the Strong's Concordance as if James Strong's, who was born and lived between August of 1822 to August 1894, wasn't a white man. You see him right here. You about to say, oh, ain't a devil that the Bible speaks of, but you'll go right to his concordance. It would be as if he said in your class and said, look, check this out. To put this into perspective, you brothers who teach and say these things, I know we don't always agree on everything, but think about this for a second. That man you just saw on that picture is James Strong. That's a fact. If he came to your school, your church, your congregation, and you teach your congregation that he's the devil that the Bible speaks of, and he start passing out concordances. Here you go. Here's my concordance. This is what I said the word means in Hebrew. Here, take one and pass it down. Y'all be looking at him like, uh-uh. Hey, and matter of fact, get out, Esau. You'd say that. Or what if he was outside of your congregation or whatnot? Say, here, here goes some concordance for you guys. Yeah, here, you take one. And, and here you go. You say your name is what? Okay. Um, yahari, 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 yasharala. Okay, here you go. I don't know what that means, but here you go, my brother. And what you say your name is? Okay, you say your name is Bonnie. You have a die. Here you go. And we go. They take one. Hmm? You would look at him like he's crazy. But today in 2023, you would be like, hey, you know what? I'm glad he gave me that book. Hey, right on, right on. Esau. Devil. Right? That's what I'm saying right there. The hypocrisy in this. This is retarded. So I said here, once again, I said, let me see if I can uh, make this bigger. Here we go. Make this bigger. All righty. I said 75% of Hebrews will say the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of and turn right around and use the Strong's and Cordes as if James Strong's, the man in the picture, as if James Strong's, who was born and lived between August of 1822 and 1894, wasn't a white man. They would say, well, that's Yiddish, which is not Yiddish because Yiddish was originally Hebrew words with a German accent or dialect, as we just learned, or some of you just learned in this. I said the Strong's concordance that they used from uh, used from James Strong's was not from no Lasha Wan Kordash. What do I mean by that? This right here. Because when you look at ancient Hebrew, it looks totally different. The shapes of the letters are different. So when y'all go for the Strong's Concordance, this ain't from what you call Lasha Wan Kordash. Y'all will read this as La'a. La'a is how y'all read it. Huh? And, it and when you go into the pictographs, you have a staff, which will be the Lamed. And then you have the ox, which will be what they will call Ah. Technically, Aleph. Technically, it's silent. But that's another topic, though. But anyway, that was one of the points I was bringing out. So I said the Strong's Concordance that they used from James Strong was not from no Lashawan and or what they'll call holy appeared tongue, as they say. Then you ask them to prove to you that the ancient paleo made all ah sounds in the ancient world. Listen to what I said right here. Ask them to prove that to you, that it made all ah sounds in the ancient world. And then I said, and show me your ancient Hebrew Bible. But look at this. I got one that predates your 1611 edition King James Version Bible, though. Show me one that predates that. Show me one. Then I said, no answer. Just an app. That's all you'll get. Or mean that tells you how the words are sounded out. Basically, that's all you're going to get, guys. Feelings, emotions. Don't forget the setup questions. Oh, man, they're going to ask you all type of setup questions. And then, of course, it's going to result in name calling. You a coon. You this. X, Y, and Z. It'll be that. Fear tactics. 
but they won't give you no an ancient sources, no ancient answers. I'm telling you, they won't. If they do, hey, make a video about it. Make a video about it. I'll take this one down. Well, good luck. I'm going to have lots of questions. So I said, most who make these arguments have, uh, most who make these arguments have hard copy of a Hebrew version of the Bible in their possession. Most of them do. Got their Hebrew names from a Hebrew lexicon or Strong's Concordance, which comes from which Hebrew? Not Lasha Wan Kardash, from what you call Yiddish. That's that's hypocrisy. It's hypocritical. I said, the one you call Yiddish, the one made by Esau, as you would say. I said, make sure you give double honors to your elders, elders, such as James Strong's, who's been teaching you what Hebrew words mean before you turn it into a made up dialect. Rabba Daba, Thawada, Thawada Shalawam, Akiyam. Bahasham made up dialect Hebrew. Wherever this comes from, <laughs> wherever this comes from, I said, I have no issue with this made up dialect. But if you ask me as a Hebrew reader, where did it come from? Like, where did this Rabadaba, Thawada, Thawada, Shalawam, Akiyam, Bahasham, where did it come from? And I put, who the fuck knows? Shrug shoulders. This has been bothering me a lot more lately, though. So when you brothers, Shalawam Aki, how about Shema Mashiach, how about Shah Barakata, Kwam Yasha Allah, the water, Baba Kasha, nigga, that shit's made up. The doc, that 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 dialect is made up. You don't have no proof that that really was a dialect in the ancient world. Again, you would hear me using it. But if you came to me like, yo, was this really the ancient dialect? Nah, my boy. It should go back to about 1968, as far as I know. As far as I know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen no ancient manuscripts or nothing that will support that it made those sounds. No ancient texts, no ancient sources that predates uh, all of our lifetimes in the uh, 1611 edition. I'm just using that for example because that's the most popular King James Version Bible in the Hebrew community. I don't have no proof that it technically made those sounds. I don't want to learn this Hebrew. I want to learn this one. This was the ancient. But was it really? Was it really? The shapes, yes. The sounds, who the fuck knows? Excuse my language. But who the fuck knows? Who knows? Did it really make those sounds? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe somebody has the answer. Maybe they don't. Maybe motherfuckers just made the shit up. Oh man, right here the Masoretes came in. Okay, well, can you show me that it made these sounds before the Masoretic period? Then, the Masoretic time period. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not talking to you. But there are people out there that know what I'm talking about. The MT text, the Masoretic text, before the Nikudot. The Lectris Mecti, um, the Matrix Lectionis system. Can you show me something that predates that time period, that era, that made the Abba, Gada, Hawa, Zala sounds, etc.? No, you can't. I said the only time I personally have an issue with it, meaning when people say, uh, the water ark, Kwam Yasha Al, etc., the only time I got an issue with y'all speaking this. And I said, is when some Hebrew claims this is the way that they actually spoke back in the ancient times. I said, well, what proof do you have besides memes and what another motherfucker told you? What primary, not secondary, primary source do you have that predates 1611? What ancient Hebrew Bible do you personally own that predates 1611? Oh, well, the Baraka Yahweh Yahweh made one six years ago. He made one 50 years ago. I don't give a shit. What predates that? Where he get that information from? Oh, well, you know, I don't know he had a dream. Well, hell, Martin Luther King had a dream. 
Come on now. So I said, your blue letter Bible, which is here. Let me pull it back up. I don't know what do you mean the blue letter Bible? Right here, guys. Created in 1995. Many don't know. You can look at the information right on this site. Right on this site. You can learn about it. It'll tell you right on this site. They'll go right here too. So I said, your blue letter Bible, do you know who started that app and concordance back in 1995? You learned from this, right? Hmm. Zonovan Dictionary, right? That is what? What source? Because we, you know, it was like, oh, let's get the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 213, the definition of ham. You've heard it for Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, when the eight persons lived through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, not the what are, not the Negroes, but who? But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. Come on now. We know that. That was in our community. So I said, Zion of a dictionary, right? But be so quick to say Esau the devil, yet you study his resources and teach from them. I said, yes. The Blue Letter Bible was created in 1995 by what? A non-denominational Christian ministry, which was a 501c3. The same shit you get upset with with these churches when some of you speak on them being 501c3. Come on now. Come on now. If you got a problem with that, well, then, brother, look, have a problem with James Concordance, then. Have a problem with the Blue Letter Bible. That's come from a 5013c non-denominal, non-denominational Christian organization, ministry. But then you talk about the Christians, but come pull up a Christian source. Come on now. I said, then say Esau the devil, and yet y'all use his tools to teach your camp, congregation, the truth? To tell you what this word mean? Or what that word mean? It would be just as if James Strong's was Standing outside your church, camp, or congregation, passing them out. Here you go. And you go, the water. Ah, here you go. The water. Yeah, Bubba, uh, Bubba Kasha. Uh, 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 you have one? Oh, Salakia. Salakia. Uh, Salakia. Akyam. Mashpaka. The fucking made up dialect. That's just what it is. And I don't have a problem with it until you start saying, well, this is what it sounds that it made back then. F O H. Fuck out of here. That's what I be thinking. Fuck out of here. You know, I don't look at it as something to argue with Hebrews over. Don't go use it as an argue with brothers over. But just know and understand, yo, this is what it is. So you would say he's a devil. Don't trust the white man. But then you use the white man sources to teach your camp or congregation. Then make excuses about it when we question you about it. But then say James Strong's ancestor, a.k.a. Esau, is 100% liar. That's what y'all say. So let me get this straight. This is what I put right here. So God put his spirit on him to put the Strong's concordance together so that you can know what words mean today. But he didn't put them on him to understand anything the Bible is saying, in other words. They don't know the Bible. Well, Okay, well, then James Strong's, so he's good enough to know what basically every word says and mean in the Bible, but he don't, he don't know enough to teach you. But yet you don't even know the language. You got to go look up words in his concordance that he is telling you what it means to teach you. And your Catholic congregation turn around and say that those people are the devil. They're liars. But you teaching your camp and your group from fucking liars, as you would say. Technically, that's hypocrisy. Wow. So I put here, you say you don't like Esau, and yet he all in your schools and congregations basically teaching you and your elders. Esau's concordance or James' concordance is educating you and teaching you Hebrew and Greek words. But he the liar and the devil, right? That stands for get the fuck out of here, right here. So when you bring this up, motherfuckers want to ask you the questions. Nah, buddy, you in the hot seat. Now it's your turn. Don't come asking me nothing. No, I'm going to ask you the questions. People get mad when you talk about this. 
you super bruise or and I'll put never mind. And I I, I said, Shalom Akim Barakatha Malak. So this is what they'll say, Shalom Akim um Baruch Ata Melech. That's what some would say. Shalom is what they say, peace. Akim is what we would say, Achim, which means brothers. Barak would be Baruch, which is blessing. Uh, Atha, which we'll say Ata, which means you. Melech is what they'll say, Malak, which is a king. All right. So that's the first thing I want to point out and bring out um, this thing here. So I want to bring that out because I want to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my phone so I can put the close ups of these words because we're going to we're going to go dive deeper into Deuteronomy 23 uh, once again here. There's so much to say about the Strong's Concordance Doctrine, but I think you all get the point with that. So in Deuteronomy 23 and 7, the verse says here, uh, it is the King James Version. It says, you should not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You should not abhor an Egyptian because you was a stranger in his land. Now the word abhor um, has a word ta'ab, or ta'ab, uh, which means to uh, detest. Um, look at what discussion. In other words, hatred, Edomite, a uh, descent of Esau. So you'll get some people to say, no, that is a mistranslation of the Bible. Let me let me put on here right real quick. They'll say, no, this is a mistranslation of the Bible. It's what they'll see. This is the doctrine. They'll say things like um, it should be a, it's, the word there was technically Assyrian. All right. Arami or Eromi um, and not Edomi. All right, that's what they'll basically say. And they say is a mistranslation. All right. Now, these are the same people that despise Esau, but go use Esau Strong's concordance to tell you what the word means. And then be like, well, right here, it was a mistranslation. Why would they do that? And then you get some simple, some simple ass Negro would be like, dang, you know what? Ak, Akium, he make a point. Hold on, get my drink. Hold on. He make a point. So they'll say things like, when we read this verse, and I've been hearing this for years, we should be using the concordance to go along with it so we can understand. So wait a minute. How I look at that is like, that would be James standing outside, James Strong's, and say, hey, hello, I'm Mr. Strong's. Uh, what is your name? Oh, yeah, yeah, you right there. Okay. Jeremiah, Yahweh, There you go. Look, uh, Deuteronomy 23 was a mistake there, but look, just check out what I have to say about that. Okay, the water. Uh, let me go get one to my elder. Can I get another one? Right on. Okay, so a dude outside, uh, his name Elder Strongs. All right, he's a theologian. All right, a Methodist theologian. And he told us that we need to understand that Deuteronomy 23 was a mistake, right? And his people made that mistake, and he coming to correct it. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, look at the devil. The devil telling the truth, finally. Give us the cloud. And you got a bunch of silly-ass Negroes clapping for nothing. All right, so we're going to dive deep into it. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, and they'll say that it's a mistranslation. So I'm going to show you what is actually being said. All right. And I'm going to show you where the deception comes from. And then we're going to go dive deeper back into it. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the next clip. You already know YouTube.com slash Judith the Shooter. Shalom. All right, Shalom. You listen to the voice of Judith the Shooter. Now, remember, this is Blue Letter Bible. And this is Deuteronomy 23. So remember where earlier thou shall not accord an Edomite. So thou shall is H8581. Not, we looked, we looked this up earlier, H3808, accor. Now the word accor is the word to like detest real quick. And some would say it don't mean that. And it actually does. When you see the word accor, here it is right here. To Ta'ev, which has a root word, Ta'ev, or some would say Ta'ab. Check it real quick. Uh, here. 
This is Isaiah 49 and 7. It says, this is Isaiah 49, it says, Ko go Israel, Then we have the word live, uh, yeah, live zo nefesh lim ta'ev goy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, matter of fact, let me just show you. So look, in short, we have thus saith, oh, wait, 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 okay, cool. Thus saith the Lord, in other words, in the King James Version. All right, then it says the Redeemer of Israel. Then we have the word uh, Kedosho, uh, all right, um, and his Holy One. Live Zo Nefesh, all right? So, in other words, to whom the man despises. Hold on one second. One second. Let me put it back up. Okay, there we go. The last video I just did got done. So it says, um, to whom men despise, then we have the word, lim ta'ev, goy, to whom the nations abhor. But it has this root word here, ta'ev. See that, H8581, to abhor, right? Right in Strong's, right? To abhor, to be abominable, to do abominably, in other words. Strongs, it's what he says to uh, to loathe, i.e., morally detest, to make to be abhorred, commit more, do abominable, utterly. See that? So, um, that being said, it does say abhor there, all right. So, when you go here, uh, lo teta ave. Click on that. This is Deuteronomy 23 and 7. You should not abhor an Edomite, Adomi. Here, same thing. Boom. Same word. Same word. Same meaning. See that? Ta'av. See that? Same thing. Now, going back. So, in Deuteronomy 23 and 7, they say that this word is a mistranslation, and it should be Syrian there. Now, they use, they use a concordance. So, check it. Now, I'm going to show you the misunderstanding here, because they actually got it backwards. So, this is H-130. All right? So, remember earlier. Hold on a minute. Real quick, let me show you. All right, so remember for the word for Edomite is H-130. And here it is in the concordance, 130, okay? In the Hebrew, Edomi. I'll tell you how to pronounce it fully, Edomi. But it goes on to say what? An Edomite or descendant or inhabitant of Edom. But then it says C-726. It didn't say it was a, a clerical error. That's key right there. So it does not say in Deuteronomy 23 and 7 that that was an error. It just says C726. It never said that H130 was an error. It does not say that. And I'm going to show you how they be slick. I'm going to show you how they be slick. But notice for the record, it does not say that the word for Edomite is an error. I'm going to say this again. It never says that this word, tetaev, if it was at the root word ta'av, a song would say ta'av, they does not say an error at all. It just says C726. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to 726. All right, let's go to it. 726. Matter of fact, before I do, there's another word we're going to go look up later in Deuteronomy um, 26 and 5. It has the word erami. Arami, like Aramean, all right? Arami, all right? An Aramite or Aramean, Syrian, all right? Partial from 758, in other words. All right, so this is a partial from 758. That's the word Aram. That goes 758 right there, Aram. See that? Right there, from the same as 759, which is right here, 759. Aramean, see that? 
showing the similarities of these words here, ladies and gents. Okay. So, um, I just want to show that really quick. But look, let's go here. It said, remember it says C726. Remember that? Remember that? Army. Uh, I'm sorry, Rami. I'm sorry, wait, let me zoom in on that. Wait that. I'm sorry. Aromi. Apologize. But then right here it says clerical error. Now, this here, when you reference scriptures like 2 Kings 16, verse 6, when you see the word for Syrian, you look that word up and it said that word is a clerical error. And the reason being is because when you learn about the what's known as the Cree, all right, um, that there, matter of fact, I might talk about that in the future uh, as well. Um, um, so basically, long story short, you have uh, words that was, um, let me put this right here, hold on one second. Okay, cool. So you have the Cree, all right, and most don't know about the Cree. All right, ladies and gents. So that's um, where... Uh, you have what is known as the, um, how can I put this, a clerical error, ladies and gentlemen, not from the actual text, has nothing to do with the text, all right? So what people don't know is that um, um, the Cree, that's dealing with what we know as marginal notes, in other words, all right? And how something is um, should be read versus uh, I think it's the uh, Katib or whatnot um, that is written in what we know as the main text. So here it is. The Kari had left marginal notes to let you know, OK, well, you see that word right there. This is what it should have meant. And they didn't change nothing. They just put it in the marginal notes. That's known as the Kari. All right. And that's what people don't know. All right. So. That being said, ladies and gents, when you look at scriptures like 2 Kings 16 and 6, you see the word Syrian? That there is what we know as a marginal error. So what some of these brothers is doing is they'll go to Deuteronomy 2 and 3 and 7, and what they'll do is they'll try to link it up with scriptures that have the word Syrians, Syrians in it, uh, which has the H726, which is this right here, and they won't show Edomi. They'll show the word Syrians. Like, you Negroes think y'all slick. And one scripture says Adomi, and the other one says Aromi. Those are two different words. But when you look at that, it'll tell you, um, as it says right here. Hold on, let me get my chopstick. It said that this word here, which is never used in Deuteronomy 23 and 7 anyway. But this word that's used, that's used in uh, scriptures like 2 Kings 16 and 6, uh, Aromi, it said that this word is a clerical error for H-130. You see that? Which means that in 2 Kings 16 and 6, it's the word for Edomite. But that's in the notes. That's why to put, that's why it says as in the margin, which is the Cree. That's what that means. Ask somebody, what does that mean right there when it says as in the margin? What that mean? Because that's in the Cree or the Cree. And that's dealing with your marginal notes. So those who got Hebrew Bibles can go and look at a marginal note next to it and know, okay, that's what the Korean, they didn't change what the text said, but they put it in the notes. That's what it should have been there. So you got the marginal notes, how um, something should be read. And then you got the Katib, which is uh, was written in your uh, your actual scriptures, in other words. That's what that's dealing with. And that's what they don't want you to know. So when you looking at Deuteronomy 23 and 7, when you see the word H-130, uh, there is no error right there. It didn't say, because that word there, H-130, there's no error. That's what it says. I'm reading it right in the Hebrew. So they'll try to get, they'll try to uh, do a play on words. And see right there. No, don't give me H-726. Because Deuteronomy 23 and 7 don't have H726 or Rami. It don't have that. So there is no error in that word. Because right here it says H130. There's no error in this word. It just says C726. It gives a reference so that you can know that, hey, 
there has been some discrepancies. And the discrepancies is not if Deuteronomy 2 and 3 and 7 was a mistranslation. No, it's dealing with scriptures like 2 Kings 16 and 6, when it has the word Syrian there. That's what it's saying there. So this is the second clip. We're going to go to the Greek Septuagint as well. Now remember, what we just got done going over was the H-130, the word Adomi. Remember, as it said right there, that's the word, the Hebrew word there in Deuteronomy 23 and 7. You got brothers that's making it seem like that's a mistranslation to say that that's not in the Hebrew text. Or some will say that's a mistranslation and it should have the word Rami. And they'll try to tie that word with a whole different Hebrew word and a whole different Hebrew number, 726. And they'll show this word that says it's a, class, um, uh, a clerical error. Now, this here is a clerical error. Not Look, this word, Adomi, is not a clerical error for this one. This is a clerical error that's supposed to be that word, which has nothing to do with Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Deuteronomy 23 and 7 was a direct translation. However, scriptures like 2 Kings 16 and 6, etc., that word there is a clerical error for 130. It's not the other way around. They trying to make it seem like it's the other way around, that this Edomi is the clerical error for the word for Syrian. Aromi. Why? Because they hate the so-called white man so much. And then when you say things like, oh, you a coon. Why? Because I don't agree with that bad doctrine. Because I don't agree with that bad doctrine. The law say, don't abhor them. That's just what the law say. That ain't my fault if you don't believe what the Bible is saying. But then you try to go to Esau's um, a, a resource, even though you say he's the devil. And then you would go say, well, right here, this is what he said. Well, I thought he's the devil and the liar then. Come on now. So right here is the clerical error. And that ain't for Deuteronomy 23 and 7 at all. So when you look at the Septuagint, which I have here, all right, the Septuagint with Apocrypha, Greek and English, all right, here we go. Right there. Let me pull it right here. We go. Right here. That's the word for not. That's the word for abhor. And that's the word for Edomite. Edomea. Some will call this Idumia. That's what I have highlighted right there. And what does it say right here? Thou shalt not abhor, not an Assyrian, but an Edomite. This is in the Septuagint, the Greek Septuagint with English translations. Edomite, which predates the King James Version Bible. It says, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite because he's your brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian because you was a stranger in his land. That's what the law say. That's what the law say. So right in the Septuagint, it says Edomia or Idumia. Right here, it says Edomite. In your King James Version Bible, it says Edomite. And then you try to use James Strong's resource, even though you say he's the devil. And then you try to go to Deuteronomy 26 and 5, and that's a whole different word there. Orami. That's not the word in Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Because the word in Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is not Orami or Eromi. It's Edomi. So why are you using a whole different word in a whole different scripture, in a whole different text to try to say, oh, well, right there, Ankh. That word right there, that word is used in this scripture. But it's not used in Deuteronomy 23 and 7, though. This word, Edomi, is used in Deuteronomy 23 and 7. So why y'all doing that? So when you look at scriptures like um, Genesis 25 and 20, Genesis 31, 24, Genesis 31, 20, Deuteronomy 26 and 5, um, I think 2 Kings 8 and 28, um, 2 Kings 9 and 15, 2 Kings 8, 29, etc. Et that word was not Edomi. That word was this word. Here, Aromi, 
And that word was a clerical error for Edom or Edomite, as in the margin or the Cre. So when you learn about that, you will learn that they put marginal notes. They didn't change the word. They kept it there because they wanted to preserve the text. Only thing they did was change. I mean, they put the word in the notes so that you can know what it is. There was no notes saying that there was an error in Deuteronomy 23 and 7 that don't exist. Y'all lying. Y'all lying. All right, so this is the next clip. So this is uh, Sefer Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, and I'm going to read verse 7. So this is in the Bible. And notice, we're going to look at marginal notes down here at the bottom here. All right, so notice, look at this. Remember, I was telling you about the Kri. So it says, or the, uh, as in the margin, remember the earlier it says low, which is not in the negative, te taev. Remember, I told you this earlier, you should not abhor ad. Adomi, Adomi, not Aromi, not Aram, but Adomi. So you should not abhor, you should not abhor an Edomite key, which is for Ahicha, who, so for he is your brother or brethren. Sorry about that, I had a call. He's your brethren. It says, Lo, Tetaev, you should not abhor Mitzray. An Egyptian, Kigir Haita Vearzo. In other words, for um, you was a foreigner or a stranger in his Ret's land. So that's the word there. And when you go down here, notice about dealing with the notes. It has nothing for verse 7 down here. It has some for verse 8. Velo, right there in the negative. Vichain. But notice, it just says verse 3, verse 8. But it says nothing for verse 7. There is no marginal notes for verse 7, which means there was no clerical error. So even though these people are saying that it's an error, we see that it's not an error. There was no errors there for Deuteronomy 23, verse 7. It don't exist. Now, let's go to 2 Kings real quick as well. Turn your Bible down to 2 Kings. All right. We'll go to 2 Kings. All right. So, you see right here, Melachim, which is for kings. Bait, or some would say bait, or vet, or vet, or bet. That's the numerical value of two. All right, so we're going to 2 Kings, all right? And we're going to go to chapter 16. And I'm going to let you get to verse 6. I'll give you a few seconds to get there, all right? Give you a few seconds to get there, because this is the word we're going to focus on right here. The Aromim. All right, the Aromim. All right? So, 2 Kings, verse 6. Hold on to me. So I'm out. Okay, so we have by eight. Now remember, for my new people, Hebrew is rare from right to left. Okay? So coming down, we have by eight, which just means what? At the time. Ha he. Ha he. That. Then we have the word has she, which is dealing with recovered, but reason that. So at the time. That Raisin recovered who? Melech Ram. All right, Melech Ram. And your King James Bible will have the word for Syria. All right, et, which is a direct object. Let me zoom out. Here we go. Elat, the word for Elath. Le Aram, to Syria. All right, not Le Adam. <laughs> but anyway, we're here. Let me zoom out. Here we go. All right. This word here is vi nashel, vi nashel, which is and drove or and drove at who? Hahudim, the Jews, our ancestors, me elot. All right, so that's dealing with what? From Elath. All right, so the Jews from Elath. Let me zoom out. Here we go. Then we have here, 
Ve'aramim. That's the word that was a clerical error. That word there, and that's what you see in the concordance in H726. So when you went to Deuteronomy 23 and 7, it said, uh, when you look in the Strong's concordance, what James Strong said, he said, C726. And when you look this word up, he was saying that this word was a clerical error, not the one that I've just shown you. The one I just shown you earlier didn't have a clerical error. That's why when you go down here, matter of fact, before I do, hold on, wait, let me go back. Uh, where we yet? Where we yet? Um, hold on one second. Um, where was she? Where the Ram? As Elia, Elia Ram, Isaiah, Ed Hodin, Mel Lowe's. Here we go. That I mean, right here. That word is a clerical error. All right, that word. All right, so now we're going on. So we are going to look that word up in a second, ladies and gents. And we just seen the word, and that's what people are confusing. This word here, that's the clerical error, ladies and gents. Hopefully you all understand that. Ba'u, which means what? Came. Elat, to a lot. Here we go here. Vaishvu. Vaishvu. That just means what? And dwelt or live. Sham there. And live there. Alright? Ad unto you have Hayam Hazet unto this day. But remember earlier, right? We were just dealing with this here. Varumim. Varumim. In verse 6. Let's see if there's a note down here. <gasps> Look at that. Verse was VV6. Le meaning to Edom. Edom. So right there in the notes, it lets us know in 2 Kings, verse 6, should have been the word Edom. But they left it alone because they wanted to preserve the text. They left it alone. They didn't mess with it. Why? Because, again, they wanted to preserve the text, ladies and gents. That was, that was the issue here. They left it alone. So this word here should have said, um, Edom, to Edom. So that's a clerical error. But they still didn't mess with it. To they didn't mess with this word to preserve the text. So they put it down in the notes so that you could know. So the people who saying, oh, well, when you look at uh, H-130 um, and Deuteronomy 23 and 7, right here, when it says Edomite, they say well, right there is the clerical error. No, that's not true. Because there is nothing that says that this word is a clerical error at all. So when you go to 2 Kings 16 and 6, and you may see in the concordance that that word here... Arami, it says that's a clerical error for Edomite, meaning that should be Edomite. Not Deuteronomy 23 and 7 should say uh, Syrian or Arami at all. So the brothers, you got it backwards. So the law states, don't abhor an Edomite. That's what it's saying. Right there, right in the notes, that's what it's telling us. Right there. I highlight it for you. Let me zoom in. Just in case you act like you can't see that. Hold on. Let me zoom in for you. Right there. That's what it says. Le Edom. Le Edom. That's the word there, ladies and gents. Stop trying to let these people pull this Jedi mind trick on you. The law states right here in the text. Hold on, let me zoom out real quick. Right there in the text, ladies and gents. Hold on, let me get my stick real quick. Oh, here we go, boom. Right here in the text. Lo tata'ev adomi, right there. You should not abhor a needle, might. Ki achichachu, for he is your brother. Lo tata'ev misre ki ger haita. Ve'arzo, you should not abhor an Egyptian. 
So don't abhor an Edomite. Don't abhor an Egyptian. See that? For you was a stranger in his Red's land. So the word there is Adomi. Let's click on it. Scroll over. Adomi. 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 And the form just below. Strong's H130. Adomi. Look at that. Adomi. That's what it says. Look at this. From the word Edom. Edom. And that's what you just saw in my notes that I had highlighted. You can rewind. Well, not in my notes, but in the notes in the Bible, in the Hebrew text. And you can rewind it and you'll see. It had the lamin in front of this word Edom. When I said Le Edom. Le Edom. You can feel free to rewind it if you want. But just in case. You can screenshot this word and you can see it right here as I highlight it. Le Edom. Le Edom. The Lamed, let me put my mm, right here. That Lamed means two or four. And that word Edom. It's the same word you see right here. Edom. That's Edom. There is no clerical error in Deuteronomy 23 and 7. The only damn clerical error is these niggas that's teaching this bullshit teaching against the law. So stop abhorring Edomites, whether you're saying that they're the Arabs or whether you're saying they're the white man or whether you're saying that they're both. Whoever you're saying that it is, don't abhor them. That's what the law say. That's what it say. Has nothing to do with, well, what about Jacob? And, and we go right here in, in Genesis, right here in 25, and he's from a Syrian. Shut up. Shut up. Is it the same H-130? No. Not at all. So Deuteronomy uh, Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is never and never was H726 um, uh, at all. It never was that at all. Let me go to Deuteronomy. Hold on one second. I'm typing with one hand, so be patient with me. Deuteronomy 26. All right, let's go to five here. Okay. So Deuteronomy 26 and five, it says, um, let me get my chopstick. Here it says, the uh, uh, Anita, all right, and you, sh um, and you shall speak, the Amarta, we were Amarta, which means to say, and uh, shall say, Lefne, before who? Yehoah Elohecha, the Lord your God, hear, Arami, Arami. That word right there, they try to tie this in. That's the word for Syrian. That is not H-130. Arami, that's another one they'll go to. Strong's H-761. Arami. Arami. Aramai. So they'll say the word my, but the hearing right here makes an i sound. But that's just dealing with a different dialect. Same exact thing. So that word has nothing to do with H-130. It's not the same word. H-130 is not a clerical error at all. It's just in the concordance it says C. H-726. Uh, C. 8726 and it said that that word that is used in second kings is just showing you the notes that word was used um incorrectly that was the clerical error and how do we know because it's in the notes they didn't change it or remove it though it just put it in the notes so the hebrew readers can know this anybody who read hebrew know this anybody has a hebrew bible that reads the hebrew bible know this we know this so we don't need to go to no concordance to see what it says. We can see it right there in the notes. That's what it is. Ani Yehudah Yorah Lehitriot Shalom.